friend of mine who was a, a good man. I mean, a great friend to me. And yet, as far as I know, he wasn't a believer. I witnessed to him, and he, but he was a good man. Yeah. And you wonder about, man, how, you know, how is it that he's going to suffer in hell forever? I don't have an answer to all of this, but I'll tell you this. God is more compassionate than I am or than you are. And when you are in heaven and you see things from God's perspective and you aren't relating and comparing yourself among yourself and measuring yourself, by yourself, which Second Corinthians or First Corinthians ten twelve says is not wise. When you look at things from God's perspective, you will not have any disappointment or bitterness over the judgment that God gives. He is one hundred percent merciful, and you will see things from His perspective, and you will agree, and you will uh, agree with it. And really, when you stop and think about it, God doesn't send anybody to hell. God tries to reach people. It's like if you could imagine you're going someplace and God just puts these obstacles in your path. It's like God builds this mountain of conviction and people coming across your path trying to turn you away from your destination and yet you climb over every one of them and persist. It's not God that really sends people to hell. People choose that over their self and all he's doing is enforcing their decision. They chose not to have God. Well, then you can reap what you've sown. Mm -hmm. And so I, that is a problem. I don't know exactly how to answer that, but I can guarantee you when you get to heaven, the Bible shows us in the book of Revelation, people rejoicing at the judgment of the Lord when people are thrown into the pit and saying, God, you're righteous. You're holy. You're going to see things differently. Today, we don't look at things from a proper, proper perspective. Our sense of right and wrong is skewed. Yeah. Like there's people today saying that being transgendered is okay and having sex with somebody of the same uh, sex is okay and having sex outside of marriage is okay. And we have so many skewed uh, values. But man, when you stand before God, everything's going to come back. You will see things the way they're supposed to be and you will not disagree with God's judgment at mm -hmm. all. I can guarantee it. Wow, that's good. I think we're out of time. I think we're out of time. So, and we only had a few more questions, but thank you guys. And, and I believe that even some of the other questions we didn't get answered, you still answered uh, by doing that. So. Amen. So we're grateful that you guys yeah. joined us. Man, I, I enjoy this Tuesday night Bible study. And like Carrie was saying, remember that we have this five days a week. Plus we have a Monday night live cast. We have a Thursday afternoon live cast. Live cast, yep. and then we live cast chapel services and worship services, all kinds of yes. things. So uh, go to our website, awmi.net, and you can check out all of those things. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can put some kind of a marker that will notify you when there's a live cast. Yeah, yeah I believe so. You can, uh, when you go to awmi.net, just check that out. Check, go into all of our, you can also watch all the archives as well. And so if you go on there, you'll be able to see the archives. And if you're saying, hey, I want to catch up on some of these other Bible studies. I want to listen to something a little bit more throughout the day. I'm doing something. I need to listen to the Word. Well, then go to the archives, and that's a way you can also so listen to everything that we're doing. And so as Carrie said, we've got over 200,000 hours worth of free material on our website. You've got no excuse not to keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. We and provide go to gospeltruth.tv. Also, we have amazing content on there with, with Andrew and friends, other people that are ministering. And so there's, it's just going to be a tremendous blessing. So there it's, is no excuse. It's our internet uh, TV station. And we have, I, I think there's 15 different broadcasters. Mm -hmm. Plus we play conferences and we have musicals on there and just a wealth of things. So check it out, gospeltruth.tv. Amen. And it will not, you'll not be anything evil before your sight. Amen. <laughs> so God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week and remember all of these other daily uh, Bible studies that we have. God bless you. Amen.
Welcome to AWM Now, a small glimpse on how Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College are raising up leaders who are changing the world, leaders like Mackenzie Schutz. While on his Karis mission trip to Uganda, Mackenzie fell in love with the local people and desired a way to improve their lives. Unsure if he should go the route of missions or business, Mackenzie returned to the country by himself in search of an answer. The people that I met were absolutely remarkable. I knew that I was where I was exactly where I was supposed to be. It was on that trip that I knew that it was not either or business or mission work and ministry work, but really it should be both. And then I, I had a business plan was, was born. The company is called Eagle and Crane Coffee Company. The Eagle represents the United States and the Crane is for Uganda. It really represents all of us coming together and making the world just a little bit better. And if we can do that with coffee, that's what we're going to do. Through Eagle and Crane, McKinsey has not only given several Ugandan farmers a chance to come out of poverty, his company also provides a mentorship program that teaches local youth on how they can produce a crop worth two years' wages. Karis certainly changed my life. To learn what I did at Karis Bible College is life-changing. At the time, when I started the company, it was a big leap, but that's what the Christian life really is, and I don't think I would have done that <laughs> if I didn't learn how to, how to practice that while I was at Andrew's school. Thank you, friends and partners, for providing a place where people like McKinsey can discover the unique call on their life and change the world one delicious cup of coffee at a time. To learn more about Eagle and Crane Coffee Company, click on the link below. A little girl grows back a missing piece of her heart. A drug dealer becomes an evangelist. A family buried under $60,000 in debt creates a business worth millions. These breakthroughs did not happen to seasoned ministers or Bible scholars, but to people who simply believed God's promises in the midst of the impossible. For 20 years, Andrew has faithfully taught the Word of God on television. As a result, we have been overwhelmed with reports of the miraculous, cancers defeated, debts demolished, autism overcome, destinies fulfilled, marriages restored, addictions broken, and healings of every kind. Our video testimony collection contains over 60 powerful stories demonstrating how anyone can access God's promises for themselves. For this reason, Andrew has made all of these stories available to you free of charge. To gain instant access to this wealth of inspiration, simply visit awmi.net, click on the Watch tab, and select Video Stories from the drop-down menu. We invite you to copy the link to each of our stories and share it as many times as you wish. Invest in yourself in a world desperate for life-changing good news. My name is Rick Renner, and this is September 15th. And our gem today is called Danger. And our scripture is from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 26. And in this verse, the Apostle Paul is talking about his life and what he has experienced. And he says, I've been in journeyings often, in perils of water. Notice that word perils. In perils, there it is again, of robbers. In perils by my own countrymen. In perils by the heathen. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among the false brethren. He repeats this word perils over and over and over. It is a Greek word, kinduno. And this word kinduno is really the word for danger. Paul says, I've been in so many dangerous situations during the course of my ministry, which meant Paul was willing to go where most people were not willing to go. If you really do what God is asking you to do, you're going to have to step out in faith and perhaps do what other people have not been willing to do. And it may present a risk. But let me tell you, the rewards are worth it all. When you see people saved and lives changed, the blessing of God come, you'll be glad you said yes even though it looked like it was a little risky. That's what I want you 
to think about today. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I want to welcome all of you that have come to our Karis Bible Study. I tell you, I'm excited about this. We now have hundreds of Bible studies going on all around the world. We've just made a push into the UK, and I think we have 40 or more Bible studies in the UK now, as well as all across the United States and around the world. I've even heard some people that do this online, and they have people from multiple countries watching, and they're going through these Bible studies. Of course, you know that the Bible studies are taught by our alumni, people that have ha sat under this ministry, that have received these truths, and we are now using them to help share these truths with you. And I just want to encourage you to open up your heart because uh, these Bible studies are taking the fundamental truths that God has shown me, and these people are teaching those to you. And I know that God is no respecter of persons. The way the Word of God has changed my life, it will change your life, but it really is dependent upon how you receive. So I want to encourage you to open up your heart and expect God to move in a powerful way. Th these are the truths that I've seen change my life and the lives of literally hundreds of thousands of other people. God will do the same for you. So open up your heart and receive and praise God. God bless you as you study the Word of God. Viewer supported Gospel Truth TV is free to listeners and free of charge for your favorite teachers. This is what we're hearing from people just like you receiving these messages of God's unconditional love and grace. Your teachings are transforming my life. Thank you. And continue teaching the Word of God. I love, love, love being able to listen to truth and be encouraged anytime. Thank you for presenting the gospel and having I can trust. I absolutely love this. Please keep it going. It is a real blessing to me. When you give to Gospel Truth TV, you're changing your life and touching countless others around the world. Click the Give button at the top or text GIVE to 719-301-2552. Well, it's uh, my privilege to introduce Carrie Pickett to you. Carrie, amen. Carrie, Carrie Pickett's one of a student's favorites. Uh, you know, Carrie actually uh, was a graduate here at Karis, uh, and what was it? Uh, two, what was it? Nineteen ninety-nine or two thousand? Nineteen ninety-nine, and then she went to Russia uh, and spent sixteen years of her life. Uh, as a missionary there, established uh, Karis Bible College there. Uh, there we had Anders Ministry there in St. Petersburg, Russia. Janice and I had, or I had an opportunity to visit there, and it was just uh, man. They just uh, Mike and Carrie have done amazing uh, work there, and that fact that work still goes on. And now uh, we we're just blessed that God sent Mike and Carrie back. Uh, Carrie is the assistant vice president of. Uh, Karis Worldwide, and uh, she's an amazing uh, teacher. She hosts the uh, Anders, Anders uh, Weekly Bible Study, and you guys are just going to be, how many of you have heard Carrie before? Okay. How many of you agree with me? Amen. All right. How many of you have not heard Carrie before? A few of you. All right. You guys are going to be blessed. So welcome Carrie Pickett to the stage with me. Amen. this morning. I was actually going to take off my high heels and walk up, but uh, Greg threw down a challenge and said, you won't be able to make it up those with those high heels. And I was like, I'm going to show him. <laughs> How are you this morning? 
Amen. I believe God's got some great things that he's going to share. How many of you were blessed by what Andrew said this morning? You know what I, I love about the word is that no matter if you've heard it before, even if you've heard something, man, it can speak to you in this season, in this moment, the things that you're going through right now, and all of a sudden it's like, that's for me right now. And you feel the Holy Spirit nudging you and talking to you. So I'm just, I'm believing that this next three days, as you guys are listening, you're going to hear those spirit moments, the spirit things that God's saying, this is for you. Amen. Well, um, as Greg said, Pastor Greg said, I was a graduate of Karis Bible College. Woo-hoo! And I graduated in 1999, so that was about 20 years ago. So I was five years old when I went through Karis. It's awesome. This place will keep you young. Amen. And so working for Andrew will keep you young. And beautiful, right, Andrew? Yeah. So last night, I'm going to tell on Andrew Womack here. Last night, he was given a beautiful story about his mom, about how at 60 years old, she was a beautiful woman. Even one of his friends whistled at his mom at 60 years old. He said, That's my mom you're whistling at. And then talking about retirement and how she aged so much in just a couple years of retirement because she just didn't, she wasn't putting her hand to something. He said, and then she came back and worked for me in the ministry and she got good looking again. And I said, well, then that means I'm going to stay beautiful working for you. And he said, well, you have to be beautiful to start with. Mike and he thought that was the funniest thing ever so they're both in trouble the two greatest men in my life and they're both in the dog pen right now hallelujah so luckily Andrew went first I get to go second he will not have a comeback until later tonight so give it a couple hours maybe he'll forget so But I loved coming to Bible school. When I was a student in Bible school, we had uh, about 24, 25 students. We were the largest class ever yet to hit Karis at that time. So we were really excited. And now I just love walking around this campus and seeing what God has done. And uh, when I graduated from second year, I uh, went straight to Russia and uh, started serving in that. We started a Karis Bible College, a team of graduates. And I, we started a Karis Bible College, and uh, eventually we moved into St. Petersburg, and we're doing the Bible College there. I actually met my American husband in Russia, in St. Petersburg, in 2004. Four? 2004. And so I'm just going to tell you, when you're at the right time doing the right thing, there's provision. Amen. Whether that's a husband or a house or finances or school for your kids, when you're at the right place at the right time doing the right thing, just like what Andrew was saying earlier, your provision is going to be there. And it's not secondhand provision. It's not like, well, they came, so let me see if I can just get them something decent. No, God wants to bless you, amen, because he loves you. And so I just, I had the privilege of being there 16 years within Russia. God did so much within my life and within my heart. And then four years ago, my husband and I, we moved back with our kids. We have an eight-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son. And so we just love this ministry. We love what God's doing. And so what I want to minister to you this morning, and, you know, God is always like this. You have this idea here in the back of your head rolling around of something that you're going to say, something you're going to share. And then right in the middle of driving to work today, I was just praying in the Spirit, and I got this one phrase that the Lord kept giving me. Basically, He just said, this is what you were praying in the Spirit, and this is what I want you to teach on. So um, while Andrew was teaching, I was listening, but I was rewriting my message. And so I believe that there's something that God's really wanting to speak to you today that's going to encourage you. 
Before I do this, I'm going to quickly do a giveaway. Um, we have some products back there, and I'm going to encourage you. All the teachers have products, whether it's books or CDs. They're going to be either up top on the mezzanine or in the bookstore. Check out the bookstore. We've got some awesome stuff in the bookstore. So if you have not yet decided if you're going to come to Karis or not, this is what you need to do. You need to go in there and buy a Karis shirt and then just wear it. <laughs> all right? And then it'll just seep into you and you'll realize, yes, I need to go to Karis. For those of you in second year, if you're unsure yet about third year, buy a shirt. No, I'm just going to really encourage you. We have some great material. All the teachers have so much material back there. And I'm not going to go through all of mine. I'll, I'll do some giveaways. But one of the things that I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of sharing about today, this uh, is a course called Intentional. And it's called the effective role of time management. And what I teach in here is not about how you fit more into your schedule. And I know many of you are sitting here, and for those of you that are guests or new, or even Karis Bible College students, you've heard me share some of these things before. But sometimes you're trying to, God's speaking something to your heart, right? And the first thing you think of is, well, I'm too busy. Have you ever had that? I'm too busy. I don't, where do I fit that in? How do I manage that? I mean, what else? You just try, and you just push it off to the side and be like, yes, Lord, someday. And I'm just going to really challenge you that God is not a someday God. When he speaks to you, it's for now, right? He's saying, this is your season. This is the time. And yes, he can show you things to come. Praise the Lord. I love that about the Holy Spirit. He's such a visionary and he can show you the things to come. But also there's things that the Holy Spirit is showing you right now. And what we do is we do this delayed obedience. Well, Lord, I'll do that someday later. Okay, let me, just, let me just finish up these things on my list. Let me just finish up all these things that I've said yes to. And what we're going to do in this course is we're going to teach you that no is a complete sentence. Amen. Hallelujah. No is a complete sentence. When you start realizing what God has called you to do, and this is such a powerful thing, is when you start to realize what God has called you to do, where he's called you to be, who he's called you to be with, you know what to say no to. That's powerful. Because the enemy's trying not only to distract you, his whole goal is to distract you from the call and the season of God on your life right now. Right? And so we get busy at work. We get busy even in our churches. We get busy, you know, and like, hey, I'm just vegging. God, this is my veg time. So, you know, I deserve 72 hours of a Netflix binge. Right? <laughs> and God, this is my veg time, right? And I just want to tell you, there's things that you have yearning in your heart. The Spirit of God is wanting to move you into. And He wants to teach you God management. And that is giving the time management of your life to God and saying, God, where do you want me to be? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to set my hands to? And then watch it be fruitful. Watch it prosper because you're doing God's things at God's season. So we're going to teach you how to use this. And then also coming tomorrow, hot off the press, is we actually have a calendar to go with this. Okay? This is not, yay, some of our students have been waiting for this. This is not to, again, Put in all of the things you want to do, but it's really saying, Lord, what have you called me to do? And now how do I order my days aright? How do I understand that the days are evil, so I'm going to use my time, and I'm going to give every part of my time to the management of the Holy Spirit. So it's going to teach you how to truly, when God says something to do, how to make that your goal. Not for you to tell God what you want to do. God, I want to do this, I need this, and please pay the bill. But saying, God, what have you called me to do? You write it in here and you start using every day to fulfill the things that God has told you to do. So we have this. This is a three-month planner. Ooh. Because we're going to teach you how to daily meditate and put into action the things that God's told you to do. Also, we have some tutorials. We have video tutorials to teach you how to do this. You guys will love this. We're having some special prices on that. I'm going to give this away. This will come, you have, to, you have to go check. This is my beta, my prototype right here. Can I have you give this away to someone? Someone who looks frazzled. Oh, <laughs> frazzled and burnout. Give it to that person. <laughs> Amen. All right, so what I'm going to share on, and I'm gonna, I'll give some product away here at the end before we close up today. But what I want to share on today is a message called Freely Given. And this is, this is something that, again, as I was praying in the Spirit this morning, 
And I'm just speaking over you guys, and I was just speaking that the Spirit of God was going to do awesome things. He was going to speak to you. He was going to stir your heart. He was going to cause things to come alive. He was going to cause you to see the seasons and the times. And this is for all of you as Karis Bible College as well. You're getting ready to graduate. You're praying about the next steps. You're going to hear some things, I believe, today that's going to say, you know what? I can go forward. But first of all, I want us to turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 32 and 39. And I love these passages of scriptures because it's so, it talks so much about the love of God. And I really felt in prayer this morning. I really felt in prayer when I was praying for you this morning that there's these things that you want to do, things that you're praying about, but you feel like there's so much more you need to do before you're worthy. There's so many things you've got to put in order and you've got to fix. Maybe you're looking at your bank account. Maybe you're looking at relationships. Maybe you're saying, hey, you know, I'd love to start these things or go into ministry or do these things in my church, but I'm not yet at the place where I need to be. And this is very much a mentality of religion because when we were in Russia, and we saw this happen so many times, as we would talk, we'd be talking about the goodness of God, and we'd be talking about these things that God had provided, and people would be like, well, yeah, hallelujah, someday. And they had this someday mentality that God would give it to them. But they were going to have to do some things, get some things in order. I mean, I mean, if you really saw who I was when no one was looking, you would realize there's a lot of things that need to happen in me before God could bless me the way you're speaking about. And this was a lot, this is what we had to battle all the time, that religion was saying you have to qualify yourself for the goodness of God. And this can happen very much even in our everyday life. You know, like we really want to do the things that God's called us to do. We really want to have that great marriage. We really want to raise our kids right. We really, man, we want God to use us in signs and wonders and miracles. We're, we're saying, man, I want people to come out of wheelchairs. And boy, I'm going to raise the dead. And that stirs up in your heart when you're in worship. And we're singing, you know, I am blessed. I'm anointed. I'm called. You're like, yeah, someday I'm going to be that. And the thing is that God is saying, no, he has done a work that makes this available to you right now. Not someday, today. Daily are his benefits for you and I today. And we have to stop getting out of this mentality, well, when I can prove myself to God. No, you're actually talking about what you prove to yourself. You're trying to make yourself feel like you're qualified. Guess what? You will never be qualified. Man, that should set you free right there. You know why? Because God is the only one who can justify you. He's the only one who can sanctify us. He's the only one that can bring us to his level, right? He came down to our level as the son of God so that we might become the children of God, right? He came down to our levels to raise us up to his righteousness and said, now I've qualified you. Now I've put my righteousness within you. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 32 and 39, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered us up for all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And so some of the scriptures I'm going to share with you, and all these verses have this word in it, freely. And I was preaching the other day, and I was just going through all these verses, and man, God just started stirring in my heart. He said, do you understand that it's yours freely right now? Because we can get into this performance mentality, even with the grace message, even with knowing that God loves us, we still are wanting so much to do great things for God. We put these markers on our own lives and say, well, when I can get to this point... When I can quote as much Bible as Andrew Walmack without looking at his Bible, right? Because he actually has the whole thing memorized. He just opens it up for show. When I can get to that point, then God could use me like this. Then, God, then I would have faith to believe God for finances to do great things. But if I can't believe God for my $5, God can't use me right now. God wants to teach you right now that he's freely giving you all things for your $5 bill. Amen. So you can continue to walk in the things. He says, I have so much prepared for you. And it goes on in these verses that he, 
He goes on and, and, and says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So one of the things that he's freely given you is he's given you an absolute abundance of his love. And he says, listen, nothing's going to separate what I've freely given you. Nothing's going to separate my love from you. So no matter what standards you've placed, no matter what you've set up and said, well, God can't use me until here or here or here or here. God says, listen, none of that separates my love for you. And so stop putting up those things, those markers and saying, well, God, you can love me this much. And then once I get to this place of spirituality or obedience or get out of these temptations or get out of these addictions, then you'll be able to love me even more. And when I can receive that level of your love, then I'll be able to walk in that level of power. He says, nothing separates us from the love of God. All your failures, your faults, your temptations, your weaknesses, praise God, he still loves you and I. He says, and he's wanting because of what he did on the cross, he says, I want to show you and reveal to you what he's freely given us, all things. Man, that just, that is absolutely powerful because, again, we're trying to put a price tag on if I do this stuff, then God can bless me. And I believe that during this time, God's really wanting to show you, you know what? Right now, it belongs to me. Right now, these things are mine. So, Lord, I'm going to let you love me. Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop putting all of these qualification things. If I do this or you do this or other people stop doing this, I'm saying, Lord, today is a new day. I'm going to allow you to give me freely all things. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. It says, and you who were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Listen, all the things that you're saying that you still got to pay for, you still got to fix and I really, when I was praying for you this morning, I felt like some of you are saying, you know, I've made some mistakes and the consequences of them I'm needing to fix before I can really do what God's called me to do. I'll tell you, you can't fix your mistakes. That's the work of the cross. Amen. That is the work of the cross. Hallelujah. Now. Some of those things we have to say, okay, Lord, here's my mistake. I bring it to the cross. You can forgive it. And now you can give me wisdom to make those mistakes. Turn around and be a testimony to the glory and the goodness of God. Look what God did with my messed up life. Whoo, look what God did with that temptation or that addiction that I surrendered to the cross. And look how he's brought it around. And now I'm free. And now I have a testimony. And now I'm helping other people. Amen. This is the power of what he's done on it. He says, you once were dead, but now, he said, listen, I've done everything. I've taken it and I've nailed it to the cross. And so if you've brought things and frustrations and burdens here, I'm going to tell you, you need to leave it here. We've got a great cleanup crew. They'll take this stuff. Man, we'll, we've got a big garbage thing out back. We'll just take all your garbage, all the junk, all the lies. You leave it here, right? Just say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to be defined. I'm not going to let my past tell me I have disqualified myself from my future. That my mistakes are too messy for God to make beautiful. And you know what, I, I'll just say this, Karis Bible College students, all the Karis Bible College students, raise your hand in this room. Woo! Bunch of good looking people. How many of you made mistakes while you were in Karis? <laughs> Praise God for the grace of God. Praise God that even in the midst of our growing and our pursuing God, if we make mistakes, we keep running it back and bringing it to the cross and saying, Lord, I thank you that you have saved me. And that my mistakes don't disqualify me from second year and third year and the calling and the ministry that God has called me to do. Isn't that good? Amen. I really feel like there's particularly one student, and I don't know you who you are. Daniel and I haven't talked. 
He's the dean of students here. I believe there's someone you feel like you've made such a mistake so drastically that it's disqualified you from the next step. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to tell you right now. Bring it to Jesus. Leave it at the cross. He's the one that fixes those things. Amen. Because he's wanting to tell you he's freely giving you all things. And all those things include an amazing future filled with the prosperity, healing, blessing, might, power, grace, divine appointments of God for your life. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 15 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. You know, it's so powerful. Not only are we loved by God, he said, I love you. Nothing can separate you from my love. He says, including, praise the Lord, your sin and your mistakes, nothing can separate. I'm going to take it. I've nailed it to the cross. Leave it there. Amen. And he says, now listen, I've also freely given you my spirit. He said, I put myself within you. When you became a believer, you became filled with the spirit of the living God. How many of you are excited about that? Amen. And if you're sitting here going, okay, whoo, if you're not a Karis Balkal student and you don't understand that, then you need to come to school. Because you need to know the spirit of God that now lives within you. When we were in, we were in a closed nation, Mike and I one time ministering, and one of the things we were talking to these ministers and we were talking to them about the Spirit of God and that the Spirit of God lived with inside of them. And it was like all of a sudden, we'd never said it before, but all of a sudden we said, listen, there's no baby Jesus in a manger that lives in your heart. He's the King of Kings. He's the risen Lord. That's the Jesus that lives within your heart. And it was really interesting what we didn't realize that kind of in that culture they taught about, yeah, you had the spirit of God, but it was spiritually immature. It was this baby spirit and you needed to grow and you were going to be this crying, whining Christian for years. So you needed to work and perform to show God your spiritual maturity so that one day you could attain to this mighty spirit of God inside of you. That is not the Bible. He said that you receive the Spirit of God Himself. You have been made now one with the Spirit of God. When you receive Jesus, you receive Jesus into your heart. Not a spirit, but the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Man, we'll start preaching on this one. So he says, listen, because of this Spirit, he said, but you have not received the Spirit of the world, but you received the Spirit who is from God. So with this Spirit, he says, so that you might understand... You might come to a revelation and a joy and an ownership that you have all the things freely given by God. Man, that's awesome. Man, that, that, that makes me, that makes me want to go backstage and go pray. (laughs) Just leave you all here. Man, just that whole thing where I could just, and even this morning, I was just praying in the spirit and I was stirring that thing up. Man, God started speaking to me and showing me stuff because he's saying, I want to show you what I'm doing. I want to show you what I've given you. I want to show you what I've given my people. Guess what? There's a lot of things you and I don't understand about the world. There's a lot of things that you and I go, what? You, we scratch our head and go, what? You know what? Praise God. We're not given the spirit of the world. We don't have to respond to this world with our natural mind, our abilities. We're not smart enough. I don't know, I don't know how to fix some of these things that I see breaking around me. They're not just broken. I mean, they're breaking. They're already broken and they're shattering now. And I look at them and say, Lord, how do, what do we do? And he says, listen, I've given you not a spirit of this world, but a spirit who's from me. And because of that, you're going to have wisdom to do what God's called you to do. You're going to have wisdom to speak into the situations that you need to speak to. You're going to have supernatural grace and power to change your spheres of influence. Not because you're so smart, but because the Spirit of God lives within you. And He's wanting to flow out of you freely. Not just giving you freely all things. 
See, this is point number, this is a point for us. Number one, I need to freely receive those things and say, yes, they belong to me. Right? So that you and I can become vessels that say, Lord, now because it's in me, I have something to give. And some of you have felt like you have nothing to give. You don't know how to fix things, change things. You feel helpless in certain situations of your life. Well, you need to come back to this. You have the Spirit of God inside of you. You need to stir up this revelation. You need to set your mind. Go upstairs. Get Andrew's book on spirit, soul, and body. And you need to put that inside of you. Even Karis, Karis students, you need to go back and read spirit, soul, and body. It is the most important revelation. It is absolutely the most important revelation that you can set your life on fire with. That I have, I'm no longer of this world because the Spirit of God is now inside of me. So the way you react to everything becomes different. The words out of your mouth now can become directed by the Spirit of God. Amen? So when you look at the things that the devil's trying to do, you are not trying to fix it or fix you or fix those mistakes. Now you get to respond to those things with the authority and the power of Jesus himself out of you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You will not lie to me. You will not destroy my family. You will not take my health. You cannot have my children and you cannot have this town. Right? Man, you understand what's freely be give, given to you? It gives you an attitude. Amen. Amen. You should have this spirit attitude inside of you that says, man, because of this, I know what I've been given. And watch out, devil, because I'm going to unleash it on you. And I'm going to unleash it on the sick. And I'm going to unleash it in America and to these nations that God is putting on your heart. You have the spirit, you have the love of God. Your sins have been nailed to the cross. Your past no longer defines you or holds you back. And you have the Spirit of God with inside of you. Romans chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. It says, even the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus. To all and on all who believe. For is there, there is no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Going back again, you know what? We've all sinned, we've all fallen short, and praise God we received Jesus. How many of you have received Jesus in this room? Man, that should be one of those hallelujah moments. If you have not, and I'll just say this right now, if you came here and you didn't even know what Karis Bible College was, you don't even know who Andrew Walmack is. Oh! If you don't know, you didn't even know him. But even, even worse than that, oh my goodness. If you came here and said, you know what? I don't even know Jesus. I'm going to tell you, we're going to have helps ministers throughout this next two or three days. And if you said, you know, I came here, somebody drugged me here, or I just felt like I had to be here. And you never received Jesus. Please come talk to us. Any one of us, uh, the staff members, any one of the prayer ministers, this is the number one thing that will change your life. If you're here and you said, I have never received the Holy Spirit, I've never been indwelt, I never have the evidence of speaking in tongues, please come and talk to us. Amen? Because God says, listen, it's something I've freely given to you. I've freely given you this gift of power, right? We, our desire is not to preach at you, convince you of anything this week. It is to reveal truth so that your heart responds. If the Spirit of God says, yes, that's for me. Yes, that's truth. We want to minister to you today. So if there's things going on within your life, if there's struggles, please come to the prayer ministers. This is what Cares Bible College is about. It's not that you come, sit. We don't look at you say, sit down, shut up, and listen. Amen. That's not what we're doing. We're saying, hey, listen, we want to minister to you so that you can tap in and unlock the spirit of God inside of you to become who God's called you to be. And if you're having difficulties along the way and during your journey, we're going to be here to minister to you. And not just the teachers. You're going to find that the students are ministering one to another. Amen? You're going to minister to each other and become a family. And those for our students, you need to continue to be family even after you leave this place. 
But you've been justified freely. You've been made as just as if you've never sinned. He says, listen, because of this, you don't have to, again, look at any of the past. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. I love Philippians. Whenever I get a new Bible, man, I go to, I first go to Ephesians. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. I remember when I was uh, growing up, I had a hard time remembering Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. You know, I was like seven or eight years old trying to memorize the books of the Bible for Sunday school because I really wanted the gold star, which meant I got the doll. All right. So I was really trying to remember Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And somebody told me it was God's eternal power company. So that's how I remember it as an acronym for Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So I've always gone there. It's like, man, this is God's eternal power company. Man, I get in this. I'm going to understand the power of God. So Ephesians, excuse me, Philippians is a a book that I love. And it says here in chapter 3, verses uh, 13 through 15. He says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He said, let those of us who are mature think this way. And if anything, any one of you think otherwise, God will reveal this to you also. You know what I love? Even if I'm not yet mature enough to understand some things, it says here, God's still going to, God wants to make it known to you. And so here we're talking about these things freely given to us by God. So I want to I want to switch gears here. So we've got all these things freely given to us. You've been given the love of God. You've been given justification and righteousness. You've been given the spirit of God. You've been given all those things that all those things include his nature and his power and his forgiveness and his ability. His blessings, wisdom, healing power, all of that is in those things. So you might be sitting here and it's like, well, if he's really given me all things, then then I don't need to do anything, right? And one of the things I really want to talk about is that because you get this revelation that you have been given so much, man, you you can start to get this desire like, I want more. I want to press in and understand. Not just hear a sermon about what I've been given. I want to understand it. I want to take ownership of it for myself. Because I've, I've done that whole thing where I read my Bible and been like, okay, well, it's the pastor's job and it's somebody else's job to make sure that I stay spiritual and I stay fed. You know what? It's not your pastor's job. It's not your mate's job. Right? You and I get this opportunity to press into relationship with God and say, Lord, you've freely done all this to me. You've given it all to me. You've made it available to me. But I'm not going to just sit here and go, oh, well. Now, now we get to press in. And this is what I want to encourage you. There's, there's things that God is speaking to you right now. And they're kind of over here in the back of your mind. You're like, hmm, okay. All right, Lord. Last week was the Army Conference. And um, for those of you that are students and you're getting ready to graduate, I'm going to encourage you. You need to become Army members. It was phenomenal, this conference. And it was, it was interesting because I'm a crier. Anybody else in here a crier? Just cry at the drop of a hat. Thank you. So I'm sitting there, and General Boykin is preaching, and man, the Spirit of God just started to minister to me. And man, I felt the waterworks starting. <laughs> and you, you know, have you ever done the whole, not now, Lord, don't bother me now. I can't have my makeup run. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. They're laughing on the front. I, no, Lord. Okay, no, not right now. But and I remember sitting there like, Lord, I'll come back to this. I'll come back to this. Up, up, we're praying. And that's what happens a lot of times. The Lord will start stirring something within you. But what happens? You're busy at that moment. Lord, this is really inconvenient. Me, you speaking this to me in the grocery line? Lord, I'm right in the middle of yelling at my child. Don't, don't. <laughs> Right? And so God will speak to you. And sometimes we just, okay, later, I'll, I'll look at that later. I'm just telling you, when God starts speaking to you, you need to press in. Lord, I'm going to press in. I'm going to lay hold of those things that you've done for me. And I want to understand that. What does that mean for me right now? And so I'm driving home later and the Lord said, okay, are you ready now? 
And I was like, yes, Lord, sorry. I mean, God just started ministering some powerful things to me. He started breaking off some ideas and mentalities about myself that I didn't even realize were there. And he said, will you believe what I say about you? Will you believe what I've called you to? Will you take ownership and be bold about it? Because I didn't even realize I had set up some barriers. Well, I got to get here before God can use me this way. And I got to do this before God can use me this way. And by golly, I'm only 13. So, I mean, how could God use me? All right, I might be 25. How could God use me? I'm I'm still a young pup. Right? And you start putting all of these things, qualifications qualifying or disqualifying markers and God says will you believe what I say about you will you actually believe the power of the spirit inside of you and then God started doing things on my heart and so this this scripture says I press in to lay hold of that and I'm just telling you and I, and I know we're talking about campus days and I know we're talking about coming to Karis And we believe in Karis because, not because we're the only Bible school in the world. It's just there's such a great message here. Man, God is doing something. And even if you say, I can't sit in this seat yet, man, we have so many different ways that you can study. And even those of you that are students, you need to take the syllabi and continue to study. Amen? We've, Mike and I have always said this. When you graduate here, we should not give you a diploma. We shouldn't give them diplomas. You know what you should get? Birth certificates. Amen? Because our goal is that when you get here, you feel like you know less than when you started. You know why? Because God opens up how much he's freely given you. He starts to open up just the grandeur of his spirit inside of you. And you start to realize, oh my gosh, I thought I knew some things. And now I realize as a first year student, I know nothing. As a second year student, I thought I knew something. Then I went on my mission trip and oh, I don't know anything. And in third year, we'll really fix you. (laughs) All right, I'm just saying it. <laughs> we'll, we'll try. You're hard. Um, no, I love you. You're awesome. So, you know, you have this, okay, so we got to press in and say, Lord, I believe you are so good and you are so deep. In those first scriptures in, in Romans chapter 8, for the love of God, nothing can separate us. If you look in Ephesians, it talks about the love of God, the width, the depth, the height, and the breadth of his love, so that we could be rooted and grounded and established in that love. You know what? Sometimes I feel like I'm, I've just barely got in the soil. But he says he wants to root us and ground us and establish that so that we would understand and be able to do all the things that the Spirit of God is wanting to say. Because he, he says in, in chapter 3, verse 20 of Ephesians, he says he wants to do immeasurably. Immeasurably, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or imagine. According to what? His spirit, his power at work within you. If you want to dream big and do great things for God, you've got to understand the spirit of God within you. And you've got to press in and say, Lord, help me, reveal that to me. And I'm not just talking about, right, hearing it in a syllabi and taking a test. I'm talking about you leave here and say, Father, what does this mean for my marriage? Lord, now walking in the spirit, how do I treat my children from the things of the Spirit and the wisdom of the Spirit. We just got a puppy. Dear Lord, I've had to tap into a whole other level of the Spirit of God. Because with my children, you know with my children, Eliana, who's eight, she can be like, you know, kicking her brother, right? And I'll be like, Eliana, that's not the real you. You have the Spirit of God inside. Jesus lives inside of you. We're not mean. We don't, we don't, we don't call people names. That's not, that's not how God made you. Do you know how he sees you? And she will say, yeah, Mom, I'm sorry. I mean, you apologize to your brother. And so we're training our children from the who you are in the Spirit, right? 
It's been really hard to try to train my dog that way. Because he's getting in the trash can and I'm like, Biscuit, that's not the real you. Man, I've had so much flesh come out with Biscuit, sweet little Biscuit. Ah. Right? <laughs> I have to press in. Not for his sake, for my sake. Right? And so there's these things, and you're going to have these things, those, those things in your life that kind of keep coming up. And you go, man, I want to get over this. So now with all these things freely given to you, this love of God, this forgiveness of God, the spirit of God that's been given to you, now you get to press in and say, that's who I really am. That's my identity. That's how God sees me. Amen? So when you get to that revelation, then you're able to look at all the lies that anyone's telling you, the world's telling you, and you say, no, that's not the real me. What you're trying to tell me I am and I am not and what I can do and what I can't do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my marching orders from the Word of God. I'm going to get my marching orders from my victory, what belongs to me. And I'll tell you right now, you're going to have people tell you you shouldn't come to Bible college. Because they have such an orderly plan for your life. Isn't it amazing how people have like a plan for you? Right? And then when you go against their plan, oh my gosh, you've so offended me. Man, do not be led by other people's offenses of you stepping out and following God for your life. And that goes for you also as Karis Bible College students. Do not be afraid to step out into the things that God's calling you to do. Because I'm telling you right now, what God's been stirring up is a greater vision of what he wants to do in your life. And it's going to take the courage to be obedient to do it and not listen to naysayers around you. And some of those naysayers may even wear Karis lanyards. Come on. Just send them to Daniel. He'll work on them. <laughs> But you're going to have to step out into some of these things because what, like what, what Andrew said, your place called there, it's waiting. And you're, going to, and you're going to have to take some steps of courage and boldness and you're going to have to believe that the Spirit of God is in you big enough to do those things He's called you to do. I'm going to give one last verse here. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. I love these verses. This is a powerful verse. We talk a lot. You know, one of the things we talk about here at Caris Bible College is grace. What have you received because of the love of God? What does that grace look like? And I love these verses. For, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. I'll just tell you right now, this is one of the things I love about the ability to press in and say, Lord, okay, help me understand, is that grace, the message of grace is absolutely life-changing. But some people don't under, un, realize and they underestimate the power of what it wants to teach you. Not just a revelation of, praise God, I don't have to work anymore, earn my salvation, give and serve and do children's ministry and give all my money before God will love me, right? And you're going to be set free. Maybe you've been caught in kind of a religious mentality and you still feel like you, you're not good enough. I'll just tell you, the grace message will set you free. But also grace, it says it will teach you. There is an instruction within grace because it doesn't just say, woo, hallelujah, you're free, Jesus loves you. It says, now because of that love, now grace is going to teach you how to exemplify itself within your marriage. Because I'm telling you that grace will teach you. It begins to train you to respond differently to the world. Not just respond to temptations and, and worldly passions for yourself. It's going to train you to be the influencer and the leader and the mother and the world changer and the businessman that you need to be in this present age. So that you don't start, go, leave this place and start looking just like the world again. Going back into business and doing it just the same. 
If you call to politics, you go back and do it just like everybody else. You parent just like everybody else. You do church just like everybody else. You do marriage just like everybody else. Grace is so much bigger than that. Grace will teach you how to take this powerful message and to be different. That your marriage looks different and it shines. Even as you're sitting there in church and the people around you going, I want that kind of marriage. It'll teach you how to instruct your children. It'll teach you how to respond to difficult situations. Where maybe in the past you would want the spirit of slap or the five-fold ministry. Man, I'm going to deal with this with a five-fold ministry. And that's not love, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control. That's not what that is. <laughs> Man, you, you have this way that you were going to Now Grace is going to teach you how to respond differently to people. To love them, serve them, train them, and mobilize people around you that you make a difference in this world. You don't just pass through it barely surviving. Woo! Praise the Lord. I barely made it, and I grabbed a couple of my family members with me. No, God has something so much bigger for you. I just want to encourage you, as you guys study, as you press in, to say, Lord, you've given me your spirit. You've given you your love. But I don't yet have that revelation. Maybe I've heard it. Maybe I've listened to Andrew. Maybe I've even been here at Karis. But I don't see the evidence of it in my life. I'm going to encourage you. You need to press in. God has something he's wanting to reveal to you, to show you. And you know the way I press in? I show up. It's one of the biggest ways you press in. You show up and you sit with your Bible and say, all right, spirit, teach me. Teach me what's mine. I don't know where to start, but you, Holy Spirit, the teacher, you know where to take me. When it's time to have worship, man, I show up. I'm not thinking of all these other things in the background. When I'm listening to sermons, I show up, right? I say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut off the TV. I'm going to shut off the Christian radio. I'm going to shut off some of these distractions. And I'm going to show up and say, Lord, here I am. Teach me. And you know, the Holy Spirit gets so excited as the teacher when we actually let him teach. And I'll just say this. If you've ever come to a place where you're like, you know, I know that. I'm good. I know that. I've heard that before. And as you're hearing it, you start to, have you ever been in church and the pastor says, today we're going to talk about God's love. And you're like, hmm. Sunday school, total Sunday school message. Okay. And you start making your grocery list or checking your email, or filing your nails, right? Barry was talking about somebody in his church filing their nails while he was preaching. Man, you know what that shows so many times is a heart that says, you know what, Holy Spirit, I don't need you to be the teacher anymore. I've got this. And you know what? None of us, none of us, even as staff and teachers, do we know anything. And I promise you, Students that are here already and students that are going to come, God shows up. He does. Your teachers show up. We show up ready to learn as much as we're teaching. And I believe that when you show up, in whatever capacity that is, maybe you show up and you show up before a screen and start listening to that at home, between work and between fixing dinner for your kids, God's going to do something. Amen. I am out of time, so I just want to close in prayer. Father, I just thank you right now. Lord, I thank you for what you have freely given to us. And Lord, if we've set up these things that said, oh, I can't do this until this, and oh God, you can't do that until I fix this. Right now, we just put those things, we just lay them before the cross and say, Lord, I thank you that you fixed them. You can take care of these things. Lord, because you came down, you took care of these things for us. And you said, now I give you freely all things. I've justified you. I've given you of my spirit. So, Father, I just thank you that we would hunger and that we would thirst, that we would say, Lord, I want to understand these. Not just with mental knowledge. I'm talking about a revelation that changes every aspect of our lives. So, Father, I just thank you for how much you love us. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you, everyone. I'm going to call Sue up here. A little girl grows back a missing piece of her heart. A drug dealer becomes an evangelist. A family buries a 
under $60,000 in debt creates a business worth millions. These breakthroughs did not happen to seasoned ministers or Bible scholars, but to people who simply believed God's promises in the midst of the impossible. For 20 years, Andrew has faithfully taught the Word of God on television. As a result, we have been overwhelmed with reports of the miraculous, cancers defeated, debts demolished, autism overcome, destinies fulfilled, marriages restored, addictions broken, and healings of every kind. Our video testimony collection contains over 60 powerful stories demonstrating how anyone can access God's promises for themselves. For this reason, Andrew has made all of these stories available to you free of charge. To gain instant access to this wealth of inspiration, simply visit awmi.net, click on the Watch tab, and select Video Stories from the drop-down menu. We invite you to copy the link to each of our stories and share it as many times as you wish. Invest in yourself in a world desperate for life-changing good news.
want to dive deeper into the Word, but your busy schedule robs you of that opportunity, now you can listen to the Gospel Truth wherever you go with the Gospel Truth radio app. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we are broadcasting the Gospel, not only our individual television programs, but we've got conferences on there and it's great. No matter how your time is divided up each day, now you can plug into the Gospel Truth 24-7 at your convenience. It's a great way to stay connected in a world that demands so much of your time. Tap the app and start listening to Gospel Truth Radio. Go to the App Store and type in Gospel Truth Radio and download it to your smartphone. Beyond the Game with Tony and JB. Stories that need to be told. To the outside world, it looked like there was nothing happening. I, that wasn't true. It's things like that that happen all the time that the public doesn't know about. Your body has an expiration date. I'm in bed the day after my surgery. Brian says, Anthony, when is enough enough? Beyond the Game with Tony and JB. Stories you won't hear anywhere else. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'm glad that you're watching our Gospel Truth TV. I tell you, this has been a blessing. You know, if you are being touched by these programmers that we have on here, I would encourage you to support them. Did you know we don't charge any of the programmers? If you appreciate that, I encourage you to be a part of it. Join us, support Gospel Truth TV, and also support the programmers. This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. Contentment is what God is looking for, and he says he searches for a heart with contentment. And that contentment simply means you're not moved by money. You don't have the love of money. You don't have that desire for money. And here's the point of it. You can have the love of money and not have any money. I mean, there's some people that are absolutely so poor. The reason why they're poor is when they get anything, they squander it. I mean, any money, it's gone. And they don't know how to handle money. And so again, the love of money is the root of all evil. Notice again, it doesn't say money is the root of all evil. The love of it. God created money. God created wealth and put it in this earth and wants to bless us with it. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Good morning. Welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Why don't you open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 13 this morning. While we are finding that verse of Scripture, I want to mention, and I don't mention enough, and thinking the other day, I hardly ever bring it up. There are free things on my website, bobyandian.com, and there's a link on there that will take you to where the free stuff is, and that is uh, ministersclub.com. In fact, if you want to go straight to ministersclub.com, you can free downloads, all kinds of information in there that you can have. And you can make sermons out of my sermons. And heck, I don't care. You know, just have at it because a lot of my sermons came from other people. Through the years, I adapted, molded, shaped, and made into my own. And and the same thing should be true with you. I don't believe in taking exactly uh, somebody else's teaching verbatim. But you know what? You can take it and work it for a while, make it into your own. And that's where it really becomes important to you. And so again, that's uh, ministersclub.com. Now you're going to be blessed. While you're on the website too, if you'd like to become a uh, partner with me, I'd sure love for you to do so. And this is where the personal side of it comes. This is where the relationship comes, time comes with it. You can go to it and get all the information off of it and say, wow, this is really great. But there comes a day too, you can say, you know what? I appreciate all this free stuff, but I'll tell you what, I want to become part of Bob's ministry. And that's where the support comes in. And that's where we are so blessed by what you see. It's just like the kingdom of God. He doesn't charge you for salvation, but after you get born again, you think, man, this is so great. I want to become a giver into God's kingdom. That's the purpose of it. That's the purpose of his blessings is so that now you can be a blessing. So if you'd like to become a blessing to my ministry and become a partner, there's a place on my website when you go to it that you can become a partner with me. And uh, so again, I'd love for you to do so. That links our uh, hearts together for a common purpose of which one day when we're in heaven, we'll see all the great results of it. So again, I'd like for you to do that. And uh, again, looking forward to it. And if you're deciding you're to do that, then thank you, even ahead of time that you're gonna become a partner with me. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13, 
verse 5. I want to talk about two words today that seemingly contradict each other, because this is really going to be a message on prosperity. In fact, my book on here, From Just Enough to Overflowing, is really a book on prosperity, how God wants to bless you. But it always comes back to it. Prosperity doesn't come because you give. It comes because of your attitude behind the giving. We're going to talk about that today. In Hebrews 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 5, it says, let your conduct, this is your lifestyle, be without covetousness. Covetousness is the love of money. So let your lifestyle be without the love of money and be content with the things that you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, look with me to Psalm 35. Jump over to Psalm 35. We're going to keep that phrase in mind where he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Look at Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. How could God delight in prospering us when he tells us we ought to be content with the things we have? The key phrase was found there in Hebrews 13, 5 at the end of it. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The greatest possession we have is our eternal life. You know why? Because it is eternal. The word eternal is attached to it. But the second greatest thing we have is wisdom. It's also eternal. God asks us to become converts, to receive him as Savior. Then he asks us to become disciples. And then after that comes all these other blessings. Your foundation of blessings should be a relaxed attitude toward the things of God. It comes down to this. Eternal life is eternal. The word is eternal. But prosperity in this life is temporary. Does God not want us to have temporary blessings? Of course he does. But he wants us to become so content with what we have in him that when we believe for these things, it really does, it's not that important of a deal to us. It comes back to this. God is looking for contented people that he can prosper. Because if you're content, he can trust you with the prosperity he's about to give. You won't get caught up in a temporary thing over an eternal thing. And sadly, many, many Christians, once they find out about prosperity, basically forget the things of God and they run right after all the prosperity. I'm going to give so I can get. I want to get rich as a Christian. And that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of God bless you is not to make you rich. It's to so you can have to give into the kingdom of God. It's he that gives you power to get wealth in order that his covenant may be established. The thing that God found with Abraham was contentment. God blessed Abraham because he knew he would be a blessing. If you're content with what you have, it simply comes down to this. Do you believe God will prosper you? Yes. But would you still serve him if he didn't prosper you? The answer should be yes, because the most important thing I have is eternal life. My relationship with Jesus, this internal peace, knowing I'm going to heaven, knowing I have eternal life, all these things are the most wonderful things you have. Everything else is secondarily. That's why it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seeking first means you're content with the things God has. And came down to this conclusion, I'm going to believe God for this, but if it never came at all, if if I was never promised this at all, I would still serve him because I love him. And so I wouldn't change my attitude toward God if he didn't prosper me. But here's the point. He has promised to prosper you, but he asks you to get your attitude right first. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse three says this, if I bestow all my goods on the poor and even give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Notice that giving should profit you, but it profits you because of your attitude. In other words, what that verse is simply saying is it's not the giving that brings the profit. It's the motive behind the giving, a love for God and a love for people, which simply means I have eternal life. I'll always have it. I, I'll have eternal blessings and rewards when I get to heaven. I'll always have it. So these temporary things in life, I know how to handle them. I should look for them to help spread eternal things to other people. I'm going to use this temporary money and put it into the gospel, sow it into this missionary's life, sow it into the church life, and give it to them. And through that, they're going to have eternal rewards. We're going to get people saved. We're going to get people discipled. The knowledge of the Lord and the relationship with the Lord is eternal, but the money is temporary. God says you have that type of attitude. And just like Abraham, I will bless you because I know you'll be a blessing with the money. And if I never gave you the money, you'd still keep serving me. That's the motive behind it. That's the love that we should have. So your foundation for future blessings is a relaxed and a content attitude about your present life in Jesus Christ and keep growing in the word of God and giving 
expecting generous returns at the end, but you can give out the right attitude expecting to profit. You notice that verse I talked about in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 3. It's the only verse in the entire chapter that has the word profit attached with it, and the whole chapter is about love. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter, but it's the only verse that has the word profit attached to it because it's the only uh, verse attached to giving. So giving should profit you, but again, the motive behind it. Here's what it means. God wants to prosper you if you'll be content, just content with what you have. If I never have a nicer house, I have a huge home in, in eternity. If I never have much money, I'll have all types of blessings when I get to heaven. But the point of it is God not only cares for me in eternity, he cares for me in time. He gives me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Life is your natural life. Godliness is your spiritual life in heaven. And God promises to give you both, but keep your priorities right. And that is keep a contented attitude. That is the foundation of which God will build blessings on from that time on. Contentment, again, is your greatest possession in life, not the things. But contentment is the foundation, again, for those things being added into your life. Don't settle into contentment and then forget your desires. God didn't want you to do that. He wants to give you your desires, but get settled into your contentment first and then say, oh, well, I'll just be happy doing this for the rest of it. I don't want any blessings beyond this. Really, God sent Jesus to the cross and 